Good afternoon and welcome to Midweek Encouragement. Uh, let's think about something today. I heard this poem long ago, and it's, it's been around for a while, uh, by Edgar Guest. And he wrote, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. And the poem says, I'd rather hear a sermon, uh, I'd rather see a sermon than hear one any day. I'd rather one would walk with me than merely tell the way. The eyes are better pupil, more willing than the ear. Uh, fine counsel is confusing, but example is always always clear. And the best of all the preachers are the men who's, who live their creed, for to see a good one put in action is what everyone needs. We've been looking at the miracles of Jesus, and as we continue with this, I, there's a miracle of Jesus that uh, I, I think is so beautiful, and it all points back to how that we can have intimacy with him. And I believe it's powerful as we know him. This one is found in Matthew chapter 8. It starts at verse 1. When Jesus came down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy uh, came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, can you make me clean? Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Then Jesus said to him, see that you do not tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and the, and the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Very, very powerful passage. And see what Jesus did. He reached out and he touched this man. That was a no-no when it came to leprosy. I, I don't know what you know about leprosy, but uh, it's an infectious disease that causes uh, that's caused by a slow-growing bacteria. And um, it can affect the nerves, it can affect the skin, the eyes, the, the lining of the nose. Uh, with an early diagnosis and some treatment, the disease can be cured today. But back in Jesus' day, that didn't happen. And scientists currently think that it may happen when a, a person who has a Hansen's disease coughs or sneezes and, and a healthy person breathes the droplets containing the bacteria. Well, prolonged close contact with somebody with an untreated leprosy over many months can catch this disease. Uh, does leprosy still exist? Yes, it does. Although it's rare, leprosy is still around. And according to the World Health Organization, approximately 208,000 people have leprosy uh, around the globe. And most of the cases are in Asia and Africa. Uh, many of those victims are... Uh, are even in Texas, but with treatment, a life with leprosy is no longer really a death sentence. Uh, the disease uh, causes uh, dis, uh, d uh, d disfiguring sores and nerve damage. While there is no vaccine, 95% of the people worldwide are naturally immune to bacteria. Well, at the time of the Bible, uh, people believed that it was contagious, so they kept far away. They kept a great distance from themselves and the people that were lepers. And uh, the biblical law said that if you had leprosy and anybody walked near you, you had to shout out, unclean, unclean, to let people know they needed to stay away from you. You couldn't go to the temple for worship. You couldn't be with your family. You were really an outcast. And, and, and so when we think about this passage, we have to think about, okay, what's the big key here that makes the difference? Uh, what, do we, what do we see standing out that makes it such a great miracle, and how does it apply to us? Well, I see a couple things. First of all, this man says, if you are willing, you can make me clean. So the man had faith that Jesus could do it, but he asked that question, if you are willing. And, and Jesus let him, know, let him know, I am willing. Uh, Jesus is not only willing for that person, but he's also willing to do a miracle in your life. Uh, what we need to do is go to Jesus and say, then that's what I need. Uh, I, I think the second thing that we see in this passage that's really powerful is Jesus told the guy, don't tell anybody. I don't know about you, but I think if Jesus were to tell me, don't tell anybody, I'd do it. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't tell anybody. I would tell everybody what Jesus had done. Uh, what, what did Jesus do? He said, he said, go show yourself to the priest and, and, and do what the law tells you. How would you like to have been a priest back then? Uh, you have people coming to you and they have this infectious disease and you've got to look them over and declare whether they're clean or unclean. You have to put yourself and your family in danger of whatever they have. 
And maybe we don't have, need to, to broadcast to everyone. Maybe we, we need to see that it is God that is on the move. And sometimes when we go out and we tell everybody what Jesus is doing in our life, it can be a little bit too much for them. I think we need to focus on don't tell anybody, but show everybody. Don't tell what you believe to be true, but what they ought to believe and what they ought to believe. Just demonstrate to them. Knowing Jesus has done something miraculous in your life. Uh, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. First Corinthians 8 1 says, knowledge puffs up while love builds up. And then I think about Romans 8, uh, 5, 8. It says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we're still sinners, Christ died for us. I love that verse because demonstrate is a uh, present tense and it's an active tense. It's not demonstrated. He demonstrates. It keeps on going. So don't show them or don't tell them, show them. What's going to happen in your life when we start uh, putting our head on a swivel and we start looking around at the things God is doing, the miraculous signs in our life, or the moments of, uh, I've, I've never seen that before, uh, showing people in these beautiful ways that God is moving in our life. And it shows up in our authenticity, and it's going to show up in our relationships. It's going to show up in our kindness. It's going to show up in our patience. It's going to show up in other areas of our life, and it's going to show that our life is full of the fruit of the Spirit. It's going to be evident, evident to everyone. So don't tell anybody, show everybody. I remember an old hymn that we have sung in church, and it says, tell what he's done, what he's done for you. And what if we change the words to show what he's done, show what he's done for you? And I think of what it says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. It says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand, and it gives out light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I've often said bright lights don't need spotlights. How does showing uh, help us become intimate with God the Father? Well, I think walking in obedience allows me to not be in fear, but I walk in the fear of the Lord. And when I walk in the fear of the Lord, I walk in obedience to the Lord. You are never too important to be nice to people. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 3, commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plans. Uh, you can plant a seed in good soil, uh, position it for ideal sunlight, and water it constantly, and above all, it is God who gives the seed life. It's God that makes it grow. Uh, our job is obedience. God's job is everything else. So whatever you do, commit your work and your efforts and your life to him and watch him work through you. Don't allow man-made lights um, to get in the way of what of God getting the glory. Spotlights make start, stars go dim. Uh, and uh, what secret loving thing could you do for somebody else this week? I think that's what this uh, miracle is calling us to be, is to show the love of Jesus. Uh, the Matthew chapter 6, 22, it says, The eye is a lamp of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. There are some people that are going to stroke us the wrong way. There are some people that are going to be easily offended because they wear their feelings on their sleeves. Uh, and, and they know how to trigger us. The word offended comes from the name of what we call a trigger on a trap. And, and so when we get offended, we are caught in a trap. And I believe what the Bible tells us to do is to release the trap or get out of the trap. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5 says, We demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So let me ask you this. So when, when you think of that person that has offended you or stroked you the wrong way, kind of bugs you or whatever, what if you took the time in the morning and uh, maybe I've got this friend that every day when he brushes his teeth, he prays for this one particular person that has offended him. And so he brushes his teeth twice a day, good oral, oral hygiene. But what if we use those times to pray for those people 
that um, need to really see Jesus. So let's go out and let's bless them and let's pray for them and let's let others see Jesus in us. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.